Hey, how's it going? It's Grant with the Garden of Eater. And in this video, we're not going to talk too much about the shrimp. Instead, the star of this video is the Malaysian trumpet snail, or the red-rimmed Melania, or some people want to say the MTS, but uh, that's also a term for multiple tank syndrome. And anybody throwing that that your way, they're, those, just, those people aren't friends. Get them people out of your life move on get more tanks that's all we got to say to that so malaysian trumpet snails they get their name from the little red on their shell uh, some of them are kind of green in hue with purple uh, others brown and white i'm not sure if that's from water conditions or what i do know in the acidic water the lower ph water with the caradina they don't get quite as big the one there on the right that's our largest by far uh, just under an inch uh, however, in our neocaridina tanks with the harder water, they are well over an inch uh, to an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half on some of the larger ones. So, uh, not really sure though when you go to the Opaula tanks, however, uh, they stay super, super tiny. So, definitely not the hardness of the water there because the Opaula are as hard as water can be. So, um, however, they're super, super hardy. They, they take transitioning from one type of the water to another very, very easy with acclimation. And you only need one female to carry on and have babies. It does not need a male to fertilize the eggs or anything like that. Uh, they can get out of control on their population if you overfeed. However, uh, this is like our most populated tank right here. And there's really not that many. I, I overfed the tanks and let them eat for like an hour or two. Like this tank's pretty much all done with their food, except for the snails coming out. So I just kind of wanted to show you guys as many snails as possible. So we overfed a little bit to get the snails to come out more, but uh, not a big deal because we don't really overfeed that much at all. We only feed two to three times a week. So with that, the Malaysian trumpet snails are basically our backup squad. They're going to eat any food that you put into the tank that the shrimp aren't going to get. Sometimes the food is really soft, breaks apart, and gets underneath the substrate. The shrimp aren't able to eat that. So the snails get under there and they take care of that. They're also like an aerator for the substrate, kind of like worms in a garden. So they're going to go through and they're going to break up those gases and release those into the water column so they don't build up and become a potential po a problem later down the road. <clears throat> Sorry. And then, as well as getting any of the gases out and eating the remaining food, you just kind of got to remember that they also produce their own waste. So that waste is going to break down into ammonia and whatnot. So you don't want to overfeed to feed your snails. You just kind of want to feed and let your snails eat the leftovers. So we never really feed for the snails unless we were like trying to breed out the blue rams or something outside then we would do that in a separate container but in our shrimp tanks we just feed for the shrimp and then the snail population kind of contains itself if you have ever got overpopulated or got some malaysian trumpet snails on a plant or something and you didn't want them uh, in a very short amount of time assassin snails will make quick work of them and eradicate your problem and before long you'll be looking for more snails to feed your assassin snails so they're never really an issue for us if they did become out of hand and you could also catch them and remove them by feeding them that's what we're going to do today we've got Layla's tank rack it's almost ready to be uh, the first water change and I'm not really seeing much snail activity so we're going to go through and catch some of the snails and then throw those into her tank all right so catching some more snails in Jaden's room. That's a nice purple. But I noticed that the snails are significantly smaller in his most populated tank. I just think the bigger ones can't get enough food to survive. So the smaller ones are repopulating. But still, overpopulation is not a problem. And go to the Opaula tank. And you can see these guys are so, so, so tiny. It's about as big as they get. The camera doesn't even want to zoom in on them. Failing horribly. There you go. But that's as big as they get. 
in the brackish water for me. I've seen them bigger, but for us, that's how small they stay. And then we go to the Neo Caradina tanks, and that's where you see some monsters. Like that one's over an inch and a quarter. There's probably some buried down in there getting the, the leftover goodies. So let's catch some more and acclimate them into Layla's tanks. All right, so we have gone and acclimated the snails and added them to each one of the tanks in Layla's room. Now I forgot to show these ones off. They've kind of got no pointy tails. They're rounded and I'm almost positive that's because of the low pH in the soil. Now I'm hoping that the snails will do a good job and level out the substrate. Now on top of them eating the leftover remaining food and aerating those gas pockets in the substrate, these guys are our secret weapon for baby food. Not really a secret, it's more of a uh, trick of the trade that I learned from some overseas breeders. The slime that's left behind the little snails as they crawl over everything that is full of beneficial nutrients that are packed with what the baby shrimp needs for them to grow up to molt and everything like that so leave the snails in they have so many more benefits than they have negativities if you don't like the look of the snails or whatever then you need to start with tissue culture cups and stuff like that so you don't ever have this issue uh, otherwise they're probably going to get into your tank one way or another so we kind of welcome them into our tanks as we clearly just added them into all of our tanks. So uh, definitely a benefit. If you ever have any issues with them, cut down on feeding, add some assassin snails, just pull them out and stop feeding and they should go away on their own. However, there's people that tried everything and the population just keeps coming back. That's probably because you overfed your tank and they're surviving on that food that's deep down in your substrate. So definitely something to keep in your tank if you want to have a nice healthy sustainable shrimp colony and like always please subscribe to the channel hit that notification bell so you get our future content we're going to do a simple caradina tank here very very shortly and also dive into planaria control so stay tuned for those thanks for watching